welcome to Ambassador Baptist Church. Delighted to have all of you here this morning. Delighted that the temperature is down a little bit. The humidity is down a little bit. So we need to enjoy today because the next 15 days, you know, amen. But God is good. We've survived the first 40 days of summer. Only got 50 days to go. And then we'll be in the fall. Sound good? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we are grateful and thankful for the cooler temperatures today and for the relief. We just pray that you will meet with us today. We're thankful and grateful for your love for us and for all you do. Be with Tim and Jennifer as they're away today and continue to bless them. Be with others who cannot be here today. Miss Hazel, who's under the weather, just pray that you will uh, touch and heal her body. Thank you for Rick, that he's here and the, the treatments that he's gone through. Pray that they would continue to work and help him to do better. Just ask that you will meet with us and your Holy Spirit would move. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Yeah. All right, hymn number 254. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. On the first. Sing it out. Good luck. 
out and see people smiling or laughing. Not sure which one it is. <laughs> Amen. 375. Leaning on the everlasting arms, and it's so sweet to trust in Jesus. We're going to do a little heart surgery this morning, so we need to trust in Him. Amen. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know the same.
chapter number four. Looks like all of you are already there. <laughs> How many of you have a heart today? Say amen. 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 Well, some of you sound like you have a heart. Now, when I talk about heart, I'm not talking about that organ that pumps your blood. Although that is a heart. And we all have that or we <clears> would not be here. Amen. But when I talk about the heart, I'm talking about the center innermost being, our innermost being, our deal that does everything. Uh, it's the most comprehensive term in the Word of God. And so we're going to do a little heart surgery this morning. If uh, I poke in a spot and it hurts, go ahead and say, ouch. <laughs> Amen? Proverbs chapter number 4, verse number 20. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my saying. That means sit up, pay attention to what I'm about to say. Yeah. Amen? What God is about to say. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, oh, I went back to verse 19, I'm sorry. Verse 21, let them not depart from thine eyes. Let them in the midst of thine heart. I'm glasses are messed up. Let's try this again. Good morning. Welcome to Master Baptist Church. Let's take Proverbs chapter number 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ears unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence. The word diligent means proper attention or care. We've got to take care of our hearts. Amen? Mm -hmm. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And so the Bible tells us that the heart is the seat of all of our action in life. Uh, and I'm not, as I said earlier, not talking about the organ that pumps the blood. I'm talking about that innermost part of us, that that makes up the real person. It makes up us, of who we are. And so it is the part of us that has desires. It's the part of us that deliberates. It's the part of us that makes decisions. And so he's saying here that we need to keep that with all diligence. We need to pay proper attention to it. We need to take care of it. And there's reasons for that. Uh, it has been described as the place of conscious and decisive spiritual activity. It is the term for people as a whole. You ever hear someone say, my heart wasn't in it? They're not talking about that organ that's pumping blood. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so it is the center of a person. That's what we need to look at this morning. So we're going to examine our hearts, and we're going to consider three things about the heart this morning. Number one, salvation is a matter of the heart. You didn't know that, did you? Salvation is a matter of heart. Of course, I like to always back everything up with Scripture, so that's what we'll do. The heart of a man is the source of a man's lostness. That's how we know we're lost. It's, it's a heart matter. It's a, a being matter. It's a, it's a thing of us. For instance, Jeremiah 17.9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And so that alone tells us that we're not talking about the organ that pumps blood. It's not deceitful. That organ that pumps blood doesn't tell us what to do and not to do, what to decide and what not to decide. But the heart, the, the center being, the center of a person is evil, the Bible says. If the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So we may say, I know myself, I know all about me, but the Bible says that can be deceiving. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Now, David, when he had committed all his sin with Bathsheba and murdered her husband and all the things that he went, in Psalms 51, 10, he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And so scientists say that snowflakes, and of course every snowflake <laughs> is different, correct? That's right. Obviously every heart is different, every person is different. But they have found that snowflakes have a tiny piece of dust at its core. Whether it picks it up coming through the atmosphere or what, I do not know. But they say that that is 
that the, the snowflake has a dirty heart. Because the center of the flake has that, that little speck of dirt. It's, it's just a dirty heart. And the same is true for you and I. We have a dirty heart. When Adam and Eve sinned in the guard, that sin was passed on to you and I. And so we have that same filth, that same deceitful heart that they had. And so that tells us that it's the heart of faith and not the head. Let me say that again. It's a heart of faith and not the head that is the vehicle of salvation. There are a lot of people today in their head, they think they're going to heaven when they die. But it's not gone from here to here. This 18 inches from here to here. You can think you're going to heaven all you want. You can think, well, I've lived a good life, and so I'm going to go to heaven. My, my good's going to outweigh my bad. Or you can think because you're a member of Ambassador Baptist Church that when you die, you're going to go to heaven because Ambassador Baptist Church is the best church in the world to be a member of. Surely if you're a member here, you're going to go to heaven when you die. Not so. Right. That's all head knowledge. What does Romans 10, 9, and 10 say? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, well, what does that mean? means you need to confess that he was the son of God, that he was virgin born, that he came, that he was sinless, that he died, that he was buried, that he rose again. That's the gospel. That's confessing with our mouth. And shalt believe in thine heart. Now, is that that little organ? Believe in the little blood pumping organ? No. It's our central being. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart... Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so salvation is a matter of the heart. It's a matter of that inner being realizing that we are sinners in need of a Savior, can't save ourselves, and so we have to trust in Jesus in order to be saved. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 29, 13, And ye shall seek me and find me. How many of you have ever sought out the Lord during times of trouble or times of joy even? And, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. When was the last time you sought the Lord with your heart? With your innermost being and in, in sincerity? Uh, this week, as I was telling Miss Carolyn earlier today, this week is what's known as the Sorrel Lord Conference, and they meet in North Carolina, and all these preachers come together, and they preach, and, and, and I one time traveled there, but I hadn't lately, but uh, they, they preach, and, and they, they try to preach the truth, and people listen, but it's, it's, it's all about our heart. Is your heart in it? You ever heard that phrase, is your heart in it? And so we have to seek the Lord with all our heart. And here's the thing. The Bible said God knows our heart. So God knows if you are sincere or not. God knows if you're saved or not. God knows if the life that you're living, if it's genuine or not. We can, on the outside, say, yeah, I'm a Christian, yeah, yeah. But God knows our heart. It's a whole different matter with the heart, is it not? You have to seek the Lord. Mark 7, 6. He answered and said unto them, Well, hath Isaiah the prophesied of you hypocrites, that is it written, the people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. We got a lot of lip service Christians in the world today. They can say, Hey, I'm saved and on my way to heaven. Hey, I love the Lord. Hey, I'm a Christian. With their lips. What does the heart say? What does the innermost being of them say? Because that's where, as the verse says here, out of it is all the issues of life. And so we can say with our lips a lot of things, but what does your heart say? By the way, God's really not into lip service. Yeah. God wants us serving from the heart. True Christianity is far more than head knowledge. And I said it a moment ago, people know about Jesus. The Bible said the devils believe and tremble, but it's all a head thing. And I've asked people, if you were to die today, are you going to go to heaven when you die? Yes. How do you know? Well, I just know. Yeah. Or I've lived a good life, or I just believe I'm going. Or, it's all in the head. The 
Bible says that our spirit and the Holy Spirit communicate with one another to let us know that we're saved. That's how you know you're saved. There's, Christianity is not just a head thing. It's a heart thing. Uh, what is your heart like today? True Christianity is an unsaved human being saved from the source and the penalty of sin. When you confess that you are a sinner and with your lips and called upon God to come in and save you, He did. And you became saved. Many people think they're saved, but they're not. Why? Because they've never repented. They've never invited Christ into their life to save them. You don't have to do anything. You just have to repent, believe, and call. And with the heart, believe. And, and you're saved. Jesus took care of everything else. You just have to repent and call on Him. And, and so, uh, they didn't invite Jesus into their heart by faith. It's a head knowledge. The inner being just is not there. And listen, when you got saved, you knew it, did you not? Yes. There was a change. A change in your inner being, a change in, in your heart. But there are a lot of people today, I promise you, that think they're going to heaven when they die. And it's right here, but it didn't make that other 18 inches to right here. Yeah. And so salvation is a matter of the heart. You believe with your heart. You invite him into your life. Secondly, sanctification is a matter of the heart. Sanctification. Sanctification is a term that we use where Jesus washes and cleanses and, and consecrates and, and makes us like him. It's an everyday thing. And it'll keep taking place until we get to heaven. Amen? Outward separation. Now listen carefully. Outward separation is not sanctification. Okay? It's more contamination. Sanctification is a, a change of heart. It's a desire to love God. When you got saved, you had a change of heart. You were going in this direction, in the wrong direction. You got saved and you had a change of heart. Now you're going in the right direction. Now you belong to Him. And so it's a, it's a change. Listen, outward separation is the same thing as the head knowledge. I can look good on the outside, but what's on the inside? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of good people in the world today. And a lot of people think that good people are going to go to heaven. But that's just an outward thing. There's not been a change of the heart. Matthew chapter 23, verse 25 through 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto white sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones and of unclean, all uncleanness. And so, just like they take care of the inside of the, the vessels, and the outside... Or the inside, the outside. They clean the outside, but leave the inside. It's the same thing with you and I. Cleaning the outside, not going to do anything for us. Making a New Year's resolution that you're going to be better the next year and clean up, straighten up, does nothing for the inside. Right. It's just the outside. And the outside is nothing but, what does the Bible say? Our very best is but filthy rags. So cleaning the outside up is not going to do anything. We need to take care of the heart, the inside. Sanctify the inside. Have a change of heart. The only way you have a change of heart is through salvation. The only way you start to get sanctification is through salvation. Isaiah 29, 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. See, there are a lot of Christians today that I think are genuinely saved, but they've gotten caught back up in the world and caught up in this and caught up in that, and they're doing lip service and all that, but their heart is far from Him. Mm -hmm. Their heart has gotten cold. If not, they would be in church and in the Bible and doing the things that God's commanded us to do. He said, you honor me with your mouth and your lips, but 
because you've removed your heart far from me. Now, all of you know Adolf Hitler. He was a master at outward religion. I mean, on the outside, he looked good. But inside, there was no reality. Now, he, he used freely the vocabulary, the Christian vocabulary, all the right words. There are a lot of people today that use all the right words. He talked about the blessings of the Almighty. He talked about the scriptures. He talked about Christian confession. He talked about all those things as the pillar of his new government. But we all know about him, do we not? And what he did. And here's the thing. He fooled a lot of people. Outwardly. But inwardly it wasn't there. The Antichrist during the tribulation is going to do the same thing. The exact same thing. He will look and seem to appear. He'll sit in the temple and, and call himself God and look like the Most High and act like the Most High. He's an imitator. Just like Hitler was. And people will follow him just like they did Hitler. And the end will be destruction. And so it's all about the heart. True sanctification begins on the inside. It works from the inside out. Just like with the cups. You've got to clean the inside out first. Mm -hmm. Just like in our lives. Daniel 1.8. But Daniel purposed in his heart. Long before the outside. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Daniel already had it in his mind and his heart. He wasn't going to do that. He wasn't going to defile himself. It started here and worked its way out. It started here with God and worked its way out. And when it worked its way out, then the eunuchs and the king and all the other people saw it. It's got to start within the heart. 1 Peter 3.15 But sanctify the Lord your God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that answereth you, a reason of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. Listen, if all you've got is the outside and someone says, hey, what is it about you? If you don't have it on the inside, you can't tell them what it is. The Bible says we ought to always be ready, but how do we have to do that? It starts in your hearts. It starts to the inside. Now, we can grieve the Holy Spirit of God when we don't keep our hearts clean. And that's a daily thing, is it not? Because the world, I mean, when it's hot like this and I'm outside sweating, if I wait until Saturday to take a shower, nobody will be around me. And if you and I, spiritually speaking, are filthy and don't clean and take a spiritual bath every day, nobody wants to be around us. Ephesians 4, 30-32 and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. If God is telling us, grieve not the Holy Spirit, then obviously we can grieve the Holy Spirit. Otherwise God wouldn't say, don't do it. How do we do it? Verse 31, let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking, be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And so if we let all this malice and evil speaking, all these things come in and get our heart dirty, our innermost being dirty, we're grieving the Holy Spirit of God. And I know there's some people that are hard to be kind to, forgive, and what have you. Jesus dealt with the same people, and he was able to forgive, was he not? So don't grieve the Holy Spirit. If there are those things that you're going through right now, and you know it, go take a spiritual shower in 1 John 1, 9. Amen? A new heart is not necessarily a clean heart. You ever get something from the store brand new and you wash it and it's all dirty and nasty from people handling it, dirt, dust, and whatever? New clothing and new stuff's not always necessarily clean. And a new heart is not always. David committed great transgressions, did he not? Mm -hmm. But he was
was pardoned when he confessed, was he not? Psalms 51, 10 through 12. Create in me a clean heart. Well, if David needed to have a clean heart created in him, then he must have had a dirty heart. With all those things we just talked about. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So, obviously, he grieved the Holy Spirit and needed to have a renewal within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And so, while David had a heart, it was a dirty heart. And David asked God for a clean heart. And so a new heart is not necessarily a clean heart. So how do we clean it up? 1 John 1, 9 and 10. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And so we need cleaning up, do we not? We need cleansing. Because I dare say all of us probably sinned at least one time this week. Somehow, some way. Have you confessed it, taken a shower yet? Let me see if this illustration will help. A mother puts a clean outfit on her daughter to send her out for the day in the morning and says, keep this unspotted. Do you ever do that with your kids? Keep it unspotted all day long. But when night comes and she comes home, the clothing is filthy. It's hard to tell the girl from the clothing. It's so dark and dirty and what have you. What does she do? She takes the clothes off the daughter and washes them, cleans them, cleans it up so that the girl, again, can put it back on. Now, the child, when the mama said, keep this clean all day, I think she had the will to try to keep it clean all day. But as the nature of a child is, if there's a water hole with water and mud in it, where are they going? Just like the pig. You clean a pig up and put him back out, where's he going? Right back to the mud hole. And so uh, it, it's the nature of the child to get dirty and get soiled. Is it not? I'm glad you agree. The same thing takes place every day with you and I as children of God. It's our nature. This body, this flesh, it's, it's natural to want to do wrong and do evil and, and to do sin. We have the ability to keep it clean. The Bible tells us how that we can keep it clean. But our nature is not this. Our nature, our physical nature is to get out there and get rough and dirty. And so when that happens, what do we have to do? We've got to get clean. In 1 John 1, 9, that's exactly what God wishes for us to do. If we will come to him and we will confess it and forsake it, he'll cleanse us and make us new again. Isn't that great? That's the secret over sin. God wishes that we would not do it, and we don't have to do it. You get in the Bible and study, you find out you don't have to do it. I mean, you've been set free. Indeed, the Bible says, Amen. And so, maybe this morning you need to take a bath, spiritually. I'm not going to talk about the other day. <laughs> Number three, service is a matter of the heart. See, it's not what, but why in service. Why are you here today? Don't answer out loud. Why do you serve the Lord? Why do you love the Lord? Matthew 23, 5a. The first part of the verse says, But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Are you here today just so the pastor can see you? So the pastor can write down here on his little list and say, Well, Mary was here today, and Larry was here today, and Billy was here today. And, and if that's the only reason you came, you came for the wrong reason. These guys did their thing to be seen of men. Get a pat on the back of men. That's what they were after. Matthew 6, verse 5 says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. Well, there's a lot of hypocrites in the Bible, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of hypocrites in churches today, too, by the way. Just throw that out there. 
since we're being honest. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Now I'll let you know, I'm not up here this morning to do this so that I can be seen of you. Anybody see me? No. That's what he's saying. Right. He says, Verily I say to you, they have their reward. You know what their reward is? Whatever they get for those people seeing them. That's their reward. They're not going to get anything in heaven. They're going to get that reward right there on earth. There was a man who had a mouse in his house. And his wife said, I want you to get rid of that mouse. The man said, I have no cheese. So he said, what I'll do is I'll cut out a picture of cheese and I'll set the trap with a picture of cheese. So he cut out the picture of cheese. He put it on the trap. He set the trap. Went back the next day and lo and behold, the trap was popped and there was a mouse in it. And he was so excited. He got up to the trap and there was a picture of a mouse. And so, counterfeit people, this is, the, this is the phrase of the day, counterfeit people who use counterfeit tactics will always produce counterfeit results. We need to be genuine and real. Are you serving the Lord today for what other people can see? Are you serving the Lord today to get the praises of man? God said, lay up treasures in heaven. So whatever you do down here for a pat on the back and for praise serving the Lord, that's all you're going to get. Enjoy it. Amen? Because that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. Serving from the heart that inner being is the only service that God accepts. Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Most of you will recognize 323. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the preacher, your fellow servants in the church. No. Do it heartily as unto the Lord. Why? As unto the Lord and not unto men. Why? Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. We're not here to serve man. We're here to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. When we got saved, we became servants, slaves, so to speak. I know that term this week's not going over real well. But we became servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. We belong to Him. Right. He purchased us. He has the right as his children to tell us what to do. And he does so in the word of God. And when we serve him, we ought to do it heartily as unto him. And not for men to see. Not for what I can see. What your husband or spouses can see. What your kids can see. How many of you know Hudson Taylor? Mm -hmm. Missionary to China. Great missionary. He believed that Christians should do all things wholeheartedly. And we ought to, should we not? Not just for the actions that can be seen. And here was his reason. As our Father makes many a flower to bloom unseen in lonely deserts, let us do all that we can do as under His eye, though no other eye ever takes note of it. In other words, I don't have to prove anything to you. What I'm doing ought not to be something to prove something to you. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing ought to be because I love Him and am serving Him wholeheartedly from my heart. Not that little organ that pumps, but from my innermost being. And that's the way all of us, whether a preacher, whether you cut hair, whether you do automobiles, or whether you're retired, or whatever it is you do. We ought to be doing it for Him and not for others. And whatever your praise you get of others, just enjoy that because that's all there's going to be of that. Yeah. Deuteronomy 10.12. Most of you probably know this verse as well. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord require of thee? There's some things here that the Lord requires. Number one, but to fear the Lord thy God. 
Number two, walk in all his ways. Number three, to love him. Number four, to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And so that's what you and I ought to be doing. We ought to be fearing the Lord, not shaking in our boots, but out of respect, respecting the Lord. We ought to walk in his ways. Right? Here's his ways. If you were here Wednesday night, you know the verse that we said. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It directs us. So we ought to be walking in his ways, the word of God. We ought to love him. Why? Because he first loved us and gave himself for us. And we ought to serve him. Mm -hmm. There's so many different ways you can serve the Lord. You can serve him by being faithful to church. You can serve him by reading the word as he's commanded. You can serve him by praying as he's commanded. You can serve him by witnessing as he's commanded. There's all kinds of ways that we can serve the Lord. But he says that we ought to be doing it with all our heart and with all our soul. Anything less in my mind is a sin because we're not being totally obedient to what God says. And so Christ's focused service doesn't distinguish between small and large. Just because I'm the pastor of Ambassador Baptist Church doesn't make me any better than any of you. I had to get saved the same way you got saved. I have to follow the word of God like you have to follow the word of God. The only difference is that God's allowed me to be the shepherd of this church and you to be the flock. We get to heaven, I have no doubt some of you will be further ahead up in the line than I will when it comes to the rewards. Some of you have been in it a lot longer than I have, Amen. It doesn't matter big or small. It, it's, it's just to welcome the opportunity that God has given us to serve whatever it may be. Whether it's witnessing to your neighbor, or whether it's witnessing to a whole neighborhood, or whatever it may be. God has called all of us to serve. And he's given us all opportunities. Ephesians 6, 6-8. Servants, if you're a servant this morning, say amen. amen. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Not only are we to serve him wholeheartedly, but those that he's allowed to be over us down here, we are to serve them, whether it's a boss or employer or whatever, as if we were serving Christ. Because serving down here, like in your position as if you were serving Christ is, is exemplifying Christ. It's letting them say, this is how Christ would do it, so this is how I'm going to do it. Verse 6, not with eye service. Well, I'm going to go into that new job I've got, and I'm just going to let them know that I'm a child of God, and, and, and then when you mess up, what do you do? They already know you're a child. Not with eye service. Don't do it for, for their service, for their purpose as men pleaders, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God. You want to know what the will of God is? It's right here. So, servants of Christ, not men pleasers, doing the will of God from the heart. Not this outside stuff, this phony fake stuff, from the heart. Verse 7, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. We're all going to stand before God one day. We're all going to give an account one day. And as we stand this morning with our heads bowed and eyes closed, God is going to be the rewarder. And we already know that everything that we do is being kept record of. And we all know from the Word of God that it's all going to go through the fire. And all those things that we have done for that pat on the back, for eye service, for men pleasers, all that stuff's going to burn up. The Bible says it's just going to burn up. The things that we did in service to the Lord for the right reason will come through as gold, silver, and precious stones. We're still saved, but all that stuff burns up. And we have nothing to present to the Master. That's why he wants us to lay up treasures in heaven that we will receive crowns for that we can bring and lay at his feet as we worship him and bow down before him. And so this morning, salvation is a matter of the heart. You need to 
get saved today, it's a matter of the heart. You need to confess with your mouth that you're a sinner and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with your heart. Call on Him to come in and save you. Sanctification is a matter of the heart. You ought to be growing more and more like Him every day. It's a matter of the heart. It's not a head thing. It's a heart thing. And service is a heart thing. If you're here today for me or for someone else, enjoy your reward because that's all you're going to get. But if you're here today because you love the Lord and all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your might, and you want to be here to see what God has to say to you and, and to challenge you with, then you're going to receive a reward for that someday. That's your service according to the scriptures, wholeheartedly unto the Lord. I can't give you any rewards for being here today. I gave you some ice cream tonight, but that's not for coming to church. But God will give out the awards one day. We will all stand before him and give an account. And so what you do down here, do heartily as unto the Lord, not unto men. So maybe God has spoken to your heart in one of those areas this morning. Maybe you're not saved, or maybe you didn't get saved in the right way. You just have a head knowledge. A friend of ours that we grew up with in Joshua, his name's Ty Campbell. He's pastoring uh, a church in Cleaver. His wife got saved in youth camp last week. They've been pastoring a church and serving together and had a head knowledge but realized it wasn't a heart knowledge and got saved. To God be the glory. There are folks out there that may have a head knowledge that one day the Holy Spirit says, look, you, you know it all up here, but you never transferred it down to here. Are you serving the Lord today with all your heart, all your soul, because you love Him? Not just so somebody can see it and know about it, but because you love the Lord. Not serving for money, not serving for what you can get out of it, but just because you love the Lord. That's how we ought to be serving Him. Amen. Our Father, we love you today. We're grateful and thankful for your word. We're thankful for your love for us. We're thankful for our salvation and what Jesus Christ did to give it to us for sanctification that we can grow day in and day out to be more and more like you. I pray you'll help us to do that every day, to take a spiritual bath when those things are in there that should not be, and to draw closer to you and to have the joy of your salvation. And Father, I pray that you'll help us to make sure that we are serving you wholeheartedly with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind, and not for uh, what we can get down here, a pat on the back and eye service. And I just pray that you'll help us to do that in Christ's name. Amen. Well, God bless you for being here this evening. We're going to go swimming. So if you'll come back this evening, we're going to go swimming. And then when we get done with that, we'll have a little treat to follow. Now, we're not going physically swimming. We're going spiritual swimming. Sorry. The baptistry is empty. <laughs> so come back tonight.